deal, buddy. Well, no, this computer is really slow. You had to do a bunch of updates, so it's finally opening here. We got about a minute to go, so everybody uh, turn on your mics, turn down your phones. Sensitive. <laughs> and we'll get started as soon as our little light comes on and tells us that they're ready on the other side. That's <laughs> my <laughs> I call this meeting of the Planning Commission to order. Would you all please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to welcome everyone who's here tonight and watching us at home. Uh, briefly, I'll go over our agenda for this evening. First, we have the consent agenda, which consists of the minutes from the October 22nd meeting. Uh, then we have several public hearings. The first one uh, on Tower Loan, uh, they requested a continuance. Uh, the second one on uh, George Ward Builders. Third one on Tucker Flat, which also will include a preliminary and final plat that we'll hear all together and then a site plan design review for the amended Point of Hope Church. <clears throat> and uh, that being said, uh, first we'll move to our consent agenda. And uh, I understand we have a correction we need to make on that one. Yes, Mr. Chair, on the absent on the minutes, you need to add my name, Lynn Banks, is absent on that meeting. Okay. Any other changes or corrections of minutes? I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the amended minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. <coughs> and uh, the first public hearing, uh, we need to open that up and continue it. Open that public hearing for Tower Loan and uh, request a motion for continuance to December 10th. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we continue. Uh, case number CUP-9-12-3650 to December 10th, 2012, Planning Commission meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That public hearing is continued. Mr. Chairman, one yes. abstention. One abstention. Thank you. I forget about that. All right, we move on to the public hearing for George Ward Builders. And uh, before we do, I'll remind everybody of the procedures for our public hearings. Uh, first, I will open the public hearing, call for exhibits from the city attorney, uh, ask staff for their comments, uh, allow the applicant to make a presentation. Uh, then we'll hear from witnesses in favor of the petition, and then witnesses opposed to the petition. Uh, we'll ask all those witnesses to please limit your testimony. Uh, to five minutes and please try not to repeat points that have already been made. Uh, then we'll move it back up here for general discussion and questions. And then I'll close the public hearing and we'll move on to a vote. That being said, I open the public hearing. Mr. McDonald. Mr. Chairman, the city has nine exhibits. The first is the staff report with attachments. The second is the affidavit of publication in the newspaper. Number three is the application with attachments. Number four is the 185-foot notification map. Number five is a list of names and addresses of property owners within 185 feet of the site. Number six is a copy of the letter sent to those property owners. Number seven is Title IV uh, land use section of the Blue Springs Code of Ordinances. Number eight is a 2003 comprehensive plan. Number nine is an email from Ken Landis dated November 5. 
2012. Those are all of the exhibits the city would offer into the record at this time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Mr. Allen. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the commission. Again, before this evening is a request by George T. Ward Builders, Inc. to rezone uh, several of uh, those properties owned by the applicant from GB and one to from RC to LI, which is light industrial. Uh, in your background, here's the overview. I'm sorry. Here's the overview map. Uh, again, this is located just east of uh, Woods Chapel Road and on both the uh, north side of westbound 40 and then also in the median, as we say, or the southbound of westbound 40 as well. You can see the list of uh, addresses that are uh, under consideration before you this evening. Uh, they're located on 10 different parcels owned by the applicant. Uh, Light Industrial, as a zoning district in the city, is intended to accommodate industries that produce finished products from semi-finished materials and require little no outside storage of materials. Uh, the district provides for uh, locations for limited manufacturing industrial activities with limited land use impacts. And uh, the properties in question have been used for auto repair, uh, motorcycle retail, and construction company uses. The applicant uh, desires the ability to increase the use for these properties to accommodate more of these types of uh, light industrial uses uh, in this part of the city. Additionally, the, uh, uh, one of the properties in question uh, recently uh, lost its non-conforming status or grandfathered status uh, because it moved from one building to another, uh, again, in that GB zoning district. <coughs> and therefore, uh, that's essentially what precipitated this uh, request before you this evening. Uh, with that, you can see under future applications uh, anticipated or required, uh, specifically required in this case for that uh, uh, particular tenant uh, in the applicant's um, one of their buildings there. Uh, applicant has applied for a condition use permit specifically for as it noted here 3001 southwest westbound US 40 to allow for automotive repair. Uh, we are anticipating that to be the of the limited variety versus general. Uh, that being the case uh, the zoning currently in place, which is general business, the GB, would allow it to continue uh, with that conditional use permit. So uh, the light industrial zoning is not specifically required, per se, for that uh, current business to operate in that, quote, limited capacity. And again, we can go through definitions if there are questions on that. But uh, limited versus general, basically, the demarcation is general is more of that uh, painting, body work, things of that sort, uh, more of the heavy type of uh, auto repair. The applicant uh, is a transmission service. Uh, and again, it's kind of on the fringe of whether that's limited or general. But uh, uh, to this point, uh, staff is anticipating that to be limited use. Again, I'll defer to the applicant and uh, his attorney to uh, discuss that perhaps in more detail with you terms of what that specific property is being used for currently and the intent of that condition use permit. So uh, they are, however, again, as noted here, proceeding with the light industrial zoning request for all of their properties. Um, I'm going to kind of go back up here to the map. The, uh, the 3001 is approximately in this area. A little hand moving there. Uh, <coughs> So again, the, in discussions with the applicant and his attorney prior to submitting the application request, uh, it was suggested that they look at combining multiple properties uh, in order to make this more of a light industrial zone, per se, rather than just an individual lot. And uh, again, in terms of that particular user, right in this area, uh, they still do need a condition use permit um, regardless of the uh, zoning request before you tonight. With that, uh, <coughs> looking at the comprehensive plan, as, you, as we discussed at, uh, I believe it was the last meeting, uh, the city is starting to embark on a comprehensive plan <coughs> update. And as the current 
comprehensive plan from 2003 states uh, the area is looking to be more regional commercial at this point. That may uh, be amended with both the comprehensive plan update undertaken by the city, but also uh, Mid-America Regional Council is going through a 40 highway corridor plan, as you're also aware, uh, that may look at some different uh, potential land uses in that area as well. So that, taking that into consideration that, um, again, light industrial with the properties already existing and the uses already in place, as well as the opportunity for some uh, adjustments uh, to this area with the comprehensive plan, but also the 40 highway corridor plan. Uh, staff is recommending approval of the rezoning application <coughs> as presented to you tonight. With that, uh, I can certainly go show you more detailed maps if you'd like, uh, it's information that's already in your packet. And maybe I'll show that for the applicant, uh, applicant's sake when uh, he comes forward here in a moment. I believe this is, this is upside down, is it not? There we go. Now north is up. There we go. So with that, I'll stand for any questions before uh, turning it over to the applicant for his presentation. Are there any questions for staff? Mr. Right. Allen. Yes. Um, I, I did have a question. Um, is there any difference in the buffering that would be required if any of these existing businesses um, <coughs> Changed hands or or that uh, with these with the residential areas right to the rear. In terms of uh, like landscape buffering, you're referring right. to. Right. Uh, it would have to be added in at at any point. Should they change use to a more intensive use, there would be uh, provisions for, I guess, uh, reconsidering their buffering in the back. Uh, I apologize. I I, I can't specifically determine each of the individual properties use other than what's already been noted in a more general sense. But uh, should, again, a new business license application, it's usually where we, we flag those to take a look to see if there's an increase in intensity in those areas, so. But there is, a, there is an increased buffering requirement. There would be. Between LI and a Between LI and general business, yes. Yeah. I don't recall, I don't Mr. Holly or Mr. McDonald have additional information. We, we can look that up as, as we go in the discussion here. I'll, we can maybe give you in specific numbers, Mr. Chairman, as we uh, go through the, the hearing here. But uh, there, there is an increase. I don't recall if it's a, a, B, a C to a B type buffer or vice versa. Then the, then the triggering factor would be a change in ownership or a change, change in, use. in use. Change in use. Or a new building, new construction. or Certainly, certainly. Yeah, anything that would, that would be considered, quote, development, you know, according to the code. Uh, certainly anything that would come before you for a condition use permit, let's say, for an, again, an increase in intensity in use or site plan design review for a new building or expansion above 25% in area, things like that. But uh, also just change in users, again, with light industrial, there could be a, a less intense GB type use. If that were to increase to a light industrial use, you know, that would we'd be looking at that through the business, uh, business license application process and there, again, opportunity for increasing that buffering because of that change in use, even though it may not be something that comes before you. So okay. with that, I don't think okay. I stalled enough for Mr. Holly to, <laughs> to look that up while we're talking That's, here. Yes. I have, okay. <coughs> Mr. Wallace. Yes, uh, Scott, um, being, a, being a fairly new kid on the block with a lot of this stuff, um, if you made the whole medium in there L1 right now and you have some general businesses in there, how? If you just made the whole thing L1, how would that affect the general businesses? Would that? Are, are you saying the? Uh, I'm saying instead of just having the entire the, area here make yeah, that LI. Right. Um, what would be uh, the drawback of doing that, if any? And you might have already covered that. I don't know. Sure. No. Uh, that's certainly something that uh, we've entertained, and we even again suggested to the applicant to look at. You know, meeting with uh, some of the adjacent property owners to look at some possibility of uh, uh, kind of economies of scale, as it were, and getting at some additional light industrial in that area. Uh, as you noted, uh, I'm not sure the detail provided in uh, Mr. Landis's uh, 
emailed, but I know that there was some interest perhaps in, on his part. I don't want to speak for him, but uh, uh, there may be some interest on his part to, at looking at uh, moving to a light industrial use as well. But um, again, yeah, that's certainly something we've considered, again, specifically because you can see there's light industrial further to the east, as you're noting, even yeah. to the south, and some to the west, just west of the, uh, the church that's located <coughs> at that corner. So that's certainly something that Again, with regional and commercial, that in the comprehensive plan, that's almost 10 years old. Uh, again, that's looking at something more intensive than what's the current zoning with the general business. So moving to light industrial is not inappropriate necessarily in a larger scale fashion. And that's why the applicants come forward, as he has now, with all of his properties, with 10 different properties, rather than just the one. In, I, okay. I think um, as far as effectively the existing businesses would be grandfathered in if a change like that were made. So there wouldn't be a direct, no, you know, they wouldn't have to close down or anything like that with the <laughs> zoning. However, we could not make that change tonight because those other properties were not posted for the public hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's no way of enlarging the map Correct. tonight. Correct. Sure. A, a next step, as Mr. Chairman, as you're noting, would be, that would be appropriate. I've discussed that with some of the other uh, properties around the area, too, looking at possibly uh, yeah. moving in that same direction. Okay. Any other questions? Um, Mr. Allen, in regards to, let's say a business moves out and we do rezone it to light industrial and you're looking at the permitted uses uh, that are allowed in light industrial, um, are there any uses that then could go into those buildings that may be um, maybe not compatible with the uh, adjacent single family residential? from a noise standpoint or, or use standpoint? Uh, let's see here. Perhaps, no, that's a very good question that uh, <coughs> what's existing may not be what will always be there. Right. Uh, and with light industrial, certainly that allows for more intensive uses. Uh, there's certainly potential for, um, again, perhaps some impact on the residential to the north, which is Certainly, uh, Chairman Billups had mentioned that as well, some uh, additional buffering that would be provided, but that may be all that you'd see. Uh, th there's not as much as you might think uh, between GB and LI. You can see, you know, bar or tavern are allowed in both and only in those two, which is kind of interesting. Uh, again, Kanisha uses for certain other uses are all pretty, pretty standard. Yeah, some of the difference you may see here would be rather than a condition use, it's a permitted, you know, by right type use. Um, well, maybe I was looking at the extreme. You know, I saw that asphalt and concrete plants, for example, are permitted use. Sure. Not industrial. That, no, that's a very good point. Uh, micro wind turbines is another one that'd be used with <coughs> condition use permit. Uh, it it just uh, you know, when you re rezone it to light industrial, that definitely will be a permanent. Um, zoning yes. and, and as long as uh, your allowable use falls under the uh, UDO then it would be permitted within that district correct yes and again there's uh, if we're looking at uh, update to the unified development code in the night within the next year that some of that may be adjusted as well uh, but yes exactly under the manufacturing industrial extractive uses section there are certainly more uh, more permissive in that area rather than in, uh, in general business. But even so, uh, the size of the, of the properties, we are looking at that as well. It may not be conducive to uh, a freight terminal, things of that sort. Um, maybe, probably not even, perhaps maybe uh, micro wind turbines, but that would still come before you as conditional use. But I uh, know it's a very good question because that's where a majority of what you see a difference is in that, that section, the uh, manufacturing section. And that's certainly uh, something to be uh, taken under consideration with your decision here tonight. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Okay, thank you, right. Mr. Allen. Thank you. And Mr. Grounds, I believe you are representing the applicant. I am. Hard to say, Your Honor. I guess that's Bill. <laughs> if you want to give me a promotion, I guess right. that's okay. <laughs> uh, whatever you want to be called, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, in, it's uh, great to be here tonight. Do I need to be sworn in? Yes, you do. <clears throat> okay. Do you sound very testy about to give the press on here? You should be the truth. Well, good. Nothing but the truth. 
I do. Uh, as Scott had indicated, uh, this was precipitated by the move of a transmission shop that has been successful. Successful enough, they wanted more space. They moved two doors down and found out that they had been grandfathered in. And uh, my clients learned at that exact same time that they had thought they had still remained under light industrial, but that in 2003 somehow those zoning designations were changed, they believe, so that they now found that they were in uh, regional commercial and general business. Whatever the case may be, in, a, in examining that, they thought uh, that the city was better served and they would be better served if they had the light industrial designation. And in support of that, they looked at a number of things. Regional commercial, as pointed out in the staff's report, includes large-scale shopping centers and motels uh, type of, and regional retail commercial businesses. Well, the city's changed a lot since 2003. Thank heavens we've been successful out on Adams Dairy and a number of other areas and now in Woods Chapel so that a lot of those enterprises that heretofore we might have hoped would have a place to go on 40 Highway, I think that most would uh, see that in terms of commercial retail pla or retail places. It would probably be a Class C uh, or, or lower uses, uh, maybe infill, but uh, probably not too likely. They want to go where the customers are, and we see that's what's happening. So that, when they looked at it, they thought what uses are appropriate in those areas, and there is one area that I think is very important, and that is uh, in the uses, if I can get it here, it's the manufacturing and assembly, which in light industrial is without uh, extensive outside storage, but is more, as staff indicated, the finishing of some materials. Types of things like marble shops that do countertops and uh, uh, sinks, uh, small electronic assembly like in computers, uh, <coughs> copiers, those types of things. Even furniture, where the wood parts may be partially finished and come in or put together, whether it like a, uh, uh, an oak table furniture store, that type of thing. Not suggesting to you that any of these are in line right now, but those are the types of uses that this property really seems like it may be conducive to now and would be permitted in the light industrial, but not uh, in the regional commercial or in the general business right now. Also looking at the city and way of argument about this, there is very little light industrial zoning in this city. There just is very little at all. We have, actually, it, I think if you go down 40 Highway some more, down by where the rental places are to the east, and there was a large piece of land down there that was developed for light industrial some years ago. I actually represented the applicant. Uh, there was a problem about a sidewalk, some of you may remember and they ended up throwing up their hands and selling it to the school district and now it's where the buses are, but that land went out of play. Uh, and then we move on to uh, where the concrete plant is and, and I'm not sure what it's zoning, but there's limited light industrial in the city for the types of uses that I've indicated. So that my client has come forward tonight believing that this is a good use for the city. The buildings are already in existence. It's not like you're going to get something that you didn't expect. Now that's not to say, and as Commissioner Trozen pointed out, when you uh, change the zoning, you don't know what will happen in the future. Uh, uh, certainly, it would seem that it would not be conducive for an asphalt plant or something of that nature, but I understand that, that concern. Uh, what we have now are businesses that have been existing uh, when they want to move up, like the uh, one that will be coming before you on the 26th, which I also represent on that conditional use. They suddenly find that they've been cited by the city. Now, the city's been very helpful. They have held off the citations. I've continue those in municipal court until we see what this body does. But that's just somebody who's moved two doors down to a larger space and suddenly finds that they can't be in the same place with the same parking lot and all of those things concerned. So in hopes to avoid that in the future and bring in other and new and growing businesses in the city, we're hopeful to get the light <coughs> industrial designation. I'd be glad to address any questions anybody has about these. Do we have any questions for the applicant? Mr. Allen? Mr. Chairman, uh, unrelated to the applicant's presentation, uh, we did find your answer about the buffering uh -huh. question. Uh, to our surprise, I stand corrected, uh, there is no change, no difference between general business and light industrial buffering. They're both a C buffer, which is 25 feet. Now, if there's no existing buffer out there, and again, they, there's expansion of 25% or more, they would have to provide that buffering 
you know, bring everything up to current code. So uh, I'm pretty certain there's not a 25 foot continuous buffer uh, at present, even with the general business zoning. So that would be a, uh, an improvement that would have to be made even if the zoning were not changed? Correct. Should it, they do that should, expansion should above 25 percent, exactly occur, become, right. again, that's the non-conforming thing that we're discussing here as well that okay. they lose their non-conforming status. When I heard that discussion, I thought we'd had that discussion before, but I didn't want to rely on memory. Age and memory seem to be a, a problem anymore. So I, I thought that there wouldn't be. But certainly if, that, if the code required it, my client would take whatever steps were necessary. I do have a question. Um, the properties were at one time light industrial? And my client changed. believes that they were. And in 2003, when the comprehensive plan changed and there were some new zonings put into place, like regional commercial hadn't existed heretofore, they believe that they were changed then. Now, I didn't research to find that out because they are what they are right now. But if you look, Dell's Honda's there, and it has some uh, uh, vehicles outside uh, and sells motorcycles, and the transmission shop that's moving was there. And so if they were in general business before, one wonders how they got grandfathered in. So they must have been there under some right previously that went away uh, when they when particular this one particular shop was moved. It, it seems to, and I'm, and I, I'm going off my memory, so we have the same problem here. But it seems to me that when we put in the RC zoning, we maybe took some things out of general business, and then that may be where the confusion Thank came you. up. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm sort of embarrassed. Uh, I don't remember because that's back when I was in office, and I actually don't recall. <laughs> <laughs> but that can be done without the property owner knowing that's happening. Um, you want to handle that? One? Well, th they would they would know it would have it would happen, but uh, I, we we tried to do the same kind of research and kind of we got we had a dead end. Uh, it was most likely though pri prior to 2003. I don't think there was much rezoning that was changed uh, or zoning that was changed in 2003 at the comprehensive plan. Most likely would have been with the 1996 with the unified development code. So that's uh, still within recent memory. Uh, you know, not. 30, 40 years ago type of thing, but... Uh, I was feeling better when you made it more... <laughs> we changed quite a bit of zoning out along 40 Highway, and I don't remember, it was probably 96 or even earlier than that, uh, and it, w the city was, was the applicant, but uh, it gave notice to everybody, and, and both in the paper and, and uh, actual letters and stuff, so they would have would have known and there probably just wasn't any reason that they were concerned about it at that time i, I would suspect okay yeah, and i wasn't suggesting anything was snuck by on no them. no no it's just that, of course not. that uh, they thought at one time they had different zoning and then this brought the reality that that's not what's in place right now yeah. any other questions the buildings were built recently. Yeah, yeah, you'll have to be sworn in before you can say anything <coughs> david war yeah. uh, and we need uh, your name and address, please. David Ward at 620 West Jefferson Green Valley. Uh, when we built those buildings back in the 70s, the, both sides of the properties, the north and southbound, or north side of 40 Highway and the south side, both ways, they were built originally in light industrial. And that was in 96 or somewhere there. I believe Gordon Braun was working for her dad at that particular time. And I think that's when the city. You're, you're not close enough to the mic. This, you know? Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and I think that's when Gordon, possibly with the city, agreed to some sort of a zoning change on the properties in '96, I believe it was. And it just didn't really come to being till this last year when a couple businesses want to enlarge and move to another space that we've noticed that we had a problem. We were never aware that it had been changed to C2 or whatever it is now. GB and RC. But okay. But that, that that's where we ran into it when we had tenants that wanted to move up into <coughs> larger spaces. The city says, you know, that they didn't fit into that. We had been going along, I guess, being grandfathered in up to that time. Right. Uh, so until we ran into this avenue. And so that's why we've come to see if we can't get this back to light industrial, what it originally was. Any other questions? I didn't, I didn't see you come in. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, are there any? Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in favor of the petition? Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak against the petition? I uh, do. You'll have to come up front and be sworn in. 
I do. You need your name and address, please. I'm Ken Landis, uh, on property at 30, one of the ad several addresses along 40 Highway in this area. I, uh, I own four parcels. I'm sorry, we need your actual address. Well, my, my, my residence, yes. uh, 225170 East 33rd Street, Court South, Blue Springs, 64015. Okay. Uh, I've got four pieces of property that would fall in a donut hole in, in the middle of Mr. Ward's property. And I, I want to thank him for, for leading an effort to get things back to where they used to be. Uh, I, I am very much in favor of his property being rezoned but I'm not in favor of my donut hole left in the middle not being rezoned along with it. I'd like to see a larger area rezoned at one time. I'm 100% in favor of going to L1. Uh, Mr. Allen mentioned that he'd suggested to Mr. Ward that he contact all the people in the area to see if they'd be interested in a joint thing. And David did one time when my family was in a restaurant, his family was in a restaurant, and I went to the restroom, he flagged me down, and says he's thinking about doing some changing along there. And I said, let's talk about it or something to that effect. I don't know, but it, it never went past that point. So it's, it may have been my fault, it may have been his fault, I don't know, but whatever. We, we never got together after that. So uh, I, I wish we had. Uh, they, uh, am I understanding with L1, there can be limited outside storage? Yes, limited. Okay. The, uh, that property, uh, particularly my four parcels, have traditionally been used for electrical wholesalers, plumbing wholesalers, people that, whose businesses require outside storage. Much of Mr. Ward's property on the other side, or portion of his property on the other side, also is zoned for that. As it is now, it, those buildings can't be used as they traditionally were used. and. My tenants and his tenants that used outside storage left when the building collapse happened four years ago, and there's no need for wholesale uh, construction material businesses. But in two years or three years, there'll be a need for those businesses. And when that happens, businesses that were the traditional tenants in that area can't return to that area. There's, uh, I calculated two or three months ago that businesses that were in Blue Springs that left Blue Springs, that can't return to Blue Springs, produced over $100 million worth of sales tax revenues in the city a year. And those will never be able to come back as long until this is uh, zoned L1. That's all I've got to say. Are there any questions for this witness? Okay, thank, thank you, you, Mr. Landis. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak against this proposal? Seeing none, I'll bring it up here for comments on the record. And seeing none, I will close the public hearing. <coughs> Any comments off the record? Discussion? A motion? Mr. The, Wallace. The buffer, <coughs> the buffer you're talking about, I guess it's got to go between the residential area there and the L1. Right. What, what is that? Describe that buffer. It could be various things. It could be a, it could be fencing. It could be landscaping. Um, it could be berming. Uh, just uh, there's a 25 foot space there that would need to be um, basically unused to provide a, and could be and filled in with a fence or landscaping or a combination thereof uh, to keep the noise and the uh, lighting everything else separated out from the residence. Okay. I, I mean, I, I question that because uh, if I had a house there, I'd, I would want to know what that is. I mean, it's too bad nobody's here to, evidently, they're not worried about it. They're, or, uh, apparently, if they're not helpful, they're not, they're here. not here, they're comfortable with things the way yeah. they are. So, uh, okay. And they bought those houses with those uh, <clears throat> businesses already there because those houses are newer than the businesses are, I believe. They are. Okay. But I wouldn't want to. Uh, something more intense to go in there and uh, create a noise that they weren't anticipating. That would be, that would be my concern. And that, okay. would, that would trigger the buffering requirement. Okay. Are there any other comments? Yeah, a couple. Yes. 
questions here. Um, the first one would be in the talking about making the whole area L1. If this is approved tonight for that to happen, someone has to come back with another motion or request, whatever, filing with the city in order to make that happen. But it, it could happen if it was decided that that was the best thing, correct? Uh, I'm not sure. If you mean the areas that are not in the current? Yes. Yeah, someone would have to reapply to the city for those areas to be converted, and then we'd have to go through this process again okay. for those areas. My second question is, will this have any effect on, like, the 40 corridor planning that we're doing? Will that be an issue with what we are looking at do possibly doing there? That's a good question, and I'll let Mr. Holly weigh in his opinion if you'd like. But uh, I, I, I don't anticipate it having that grave an impact because it is a smaller area in the grand scheme of the was a 20 some mile corridor uh, because there is or the, the use is already existing that's primarily what the uh, consultants are looking at are the existing uses and then potential future uses not as much the zoning that's uh, being uh, in place or considered okay. so they're looking at the general character in a more broad sense I guess Okay. Any other questions, comments, motions? Well, I, I do have a question, and, and maybe it could be a motion. <clears throat> to approve it now would, I mean, I've been on the Comprehensive Plan Review Committee. It, to me, it would be better to, for it to be all zoned alike rather than having this and that and it be zoned differently because it's going to be very difficult for the comprehensive planning com review committee to and it, <clears throat> as it was mentioned spot zone here and there and then try to have it them go to the city and you know it, people coming in town are going to see this and they're going to assume the other locations are zoned alike so i could see us going back for them to review this and try to bring this together as one piece, as one, if that's possible. Well, I, I understand your concern. I have a little bit of a problem personally with uh, saying no to a zoning and then coming back because it's a larger area saying yes to the exact same property that we just looked at. Um, well, I'm, I'm talking about where the, the, all the parcels, I mean, I guess we could approve it the way it is, we can this. and then the other app, somebody else would have to, to apply. To apply, because yeah, if we if we didn't approve it, uh, there would have to be a whole new application process again anyway. Um, so I don't. I, I would rather see us go ahead and approve this, and then encourage the remainders to join together to get the approval uh, to share the expense instead of forcing the words to do it again. Yes, Mr. McDonald. Well, I, I just want to make the comment that over the, the 25 years that I've been the city attorney, we have very seldom ever uh, rezoned anything of our on our own volition. There were, there was one, there have been two times, one of them was this 40 highway because they thought everybody, it was starting to move more toward uh, commercial than what it was, but uh, they specifically uh, went forward with it thinking that that the businesses that were there that that uh, may have been better in L1 would remain there and they were grandfathered in and and there wasn't a problem but obviously it hadn't changed in 15 or 20 years since it was rezoned um, the I mean, you can say we'll have a comprehensive plan, but that doesn't mean we're going to go out and re rezone everything to ma match the comprehensive plan because you can't just rezone somebody's property unless you got a reason. And if they don't want it uh, rezoned, you can, it's called a taking if you do rezone it. And uh, uh, so waiting for something like that is probably, you never know if, you, if you'd ever get all the people to agree on what they wanted to you know the same thing in that area anyway because some of them have different uh, uh, needs for their zoning any other 
further comments? Mr. Quibell. Um, another one of the rezonings, like what you just talked about, um, Mr. McDonald, I think, occurred up on up on the project on Woods Chapel. Am I remembering that correctly? Where the there was a change made to the zoning on the northwest corner of the of the parcel where all of that uh, where the CVS is going. A few years back, I can't remember what the zoning change was, but it seemed to me it had something to do with residential zoning that they didn't want to have residential there. Do you remember what I'm talking about? It was multifamily, and it was zoned back to business, general business. Yes, and that was done without the request of the landowners. As I recall, the city council asked for that to be done at that time. I'm just wondering what is the process that the planning commission or the council needs to go through if it was the desire of either of those bodies to, as a part of the city, request that that zoning be expanded. Zoning code was a big change. Right, we did that as well there. Uh, but the, the process is the same process as it is here. The city can be the applicant, uh, but the city is is taking whatever risk might be involved in trying to rezone somebody's property if they don't want it rezoned. If they want it rezoned, they become the applicant. Right, right. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I, 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 we're, out, we're out of the public hearing, so I really can't have you guys talk. I'm sorry. Um, Mr. Graham. In, in regard to the other properties around there, without the notification, we couldn't act on that even if we were acting as the applicant, though, could we? That's correct. We, cause it still those, has to go those through areas the notification were not posted in public hearing. For a public hearing for that zoning change tonight. So there's no way we could, we could recommend that change tonight. And the only thing we can act on is what is yeah, before yeah. us. Right. We could make it smaller, but we couldn't make it larger. Okay. And Mr. Chairman, you will see the city acting as a rezoning applicant with the next agenda item. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we can walk through the whole step-by-step -step process to show you what that, that looks like. That's our property. Yeah. <laughs> but, if, but nonetheless, yeah. I think what I'm hearing, though, if those, if those property owners want to come back before this board, we wouldn't have any we would, issues we with would granting them that, pretty favorably, yes. that um, zoning as well. So, okay. What I'm hearing is all, as well. Okay. Ms. Banks? I don't think I have a comment now. <laughs> Did I take your comment? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I would still entertain a motion or more comments. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. Mr. Grove. Uh, I move that we approve. I uh, recommend for approval to the council to change the zoning from GB general business and RC regional commercial to light industrial pertaining to case file number RZ-10-12-3679. Second. I have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, sir. Commissioner Abbott. Aye. Commissioner Wallace. Aye. Commissioner Graham. Aye. Commissioner Bartolotta. Aye. Commissioner Duhon. Aye. Commissioner Banks? Aye. Commissioner Trozen? Aye. Chairman Phillips? Aye. We will recommend approval of that change to the council. And we now move on to the public hearing uh, and the flats for Tucker Flat. And uh, we will hear those together, but then we will vote on them separately. I will open the public hearing and ask Mr. McDonald for the exhibits. Mr. Chairman, the city has eight exhibits. Number one is the staff report with attachments. Number two is the affidavit of publication in the newspaper. Number three is the application with attachments. Number four is the 185-foot notification map. Number five is a list of names and addresses of property owners within 185 feet of the site. Number six is a copy of the letter sent to those property owners. Number seven is Title IV Land Use Section Blue Springs Code of Ordinances. Number eight is the 2003 comprehensive plan. Those are all of the exhibits the city would offer into the record at this time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Mr. Allen? 
Thank you again, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. Before this evening are three separate applications. Uh, the one under the public hearing is the rezoning, uh, changing the current zoning from ag, which is county agricultural, and MF14 multifamily residential, to uh, all those three properties being uh, GB general business. And then the uh, preliminary plat and final plat uh, then essentially combine those into a uh, platted area. I have a few maps to show you just to get ourselves oriented here a little bit. Uh, hopefully everybody's familiar with this. It's at kind of the southeast corner uh, of the railroad and Woods Chapel Road just uh, across from Lake Tapawingo. Uh, Tucker Chiropractic is the uh, zoom in here is the uh, primary building here that's affected uh, through the rezoning and the platting request uh, at the city council meeting last week was the public hearing for the annexation of this portion you can see here probably shows a little bit better up here the blue line is the uh, city boundaries so uh, the annexation public hearing was held last week next week will be the uh, uh, reading of the ordinances to accept that into the city zoom out here ha ah. look at that that's slick all right uh, <laughs> showing you the three lots or pieces I, sh I should say in in question here under consideration this shows you I think a little bit better uh, orientation of where things are at. You can see the right of way and the city, uh, current city boundaries uh, along Woods Chapel Road. <coughs> to the south and west here is Lake Tapawingo and in this area is unincorporated Jackson County. Let's see if we can see some other maps. This uh, highlights the area. This is the uh, annexation uh, or the, yeah, the an primarily the annexation area. Let me see if I can show some of the other maps there's a better one actually in the uh, platting so you can bear with me I'll kind of jump over to that we'll probably just stay on that one for now there we go this shows a little bit more specifically the the lots it'll be combined to two lots lot one and lot two for the plat I guess it's called Tecker plat first plat lots one and two and let me see there's a, another map that, uh, let's see if I can find that for you. Ah, thank you. This is one of those. No. Nope. Well, this doesn't show it as clearly, but there's a map, uh, it should be in your packet, that shows essentially the existing alignment of the uh, Woods Chapel right of way and then the proposed alignment. Maybe Karen, do you remember where that one is? In here. I thought it was right after this, but. <coughs> huh. No, nope. it's not in here. It should be in your packet. Uh, and I will jump over to the document camera. Oh, ah, here we go. Well, either way, we can look at it here. Uh, here's the railroad. Here's the current configuration. Let me zoom in a little bit. See, here's the current configuration. Kind of, it's a little bit more ghosted here. And then the darker lines show you <coughs> the uh, the new alignment that will be again kind of cutting down that sharp curve. If you are familiar with that that curve right at the railroad track there, so it will not impact uh, the uh, chiropractic office per se uh, in terms of the, the building or anything of that sort, but it will uh, impact a little bit of the property at this end. So this is a joint application for the rezoning as well as with the, uh, the platting. Uh, the city is the primary applicant though uh, because we do own 
a majority of the property here in question at the moment. And uh, our city engineer is present. If there are any questions about the actual kind of uh, impact in terms of the realignment of the road and uh, the process to this point, uh, staff in both departments, community development and public works, have been involved with uh, this part of the, I guess, phase two of the Woods Chapel Road uh, project. And again, uh, the rezoning is just to make everything more consistent, similar to what you saw with the previous application, uh, more consistent, make everything a general business. As you can see here, turning this small piece from MF14 and this piece from that county ag designation, and then making all of this area general business along Woods Chapel. Uh, the total area in question is only just uh, over one and a half acres in size. And again, it, as you saw with the, uh, the aerial photo, its primary impact is the parking lot uh, for the Tucker Chiropractic <coughs> building. And again, the, it, the reason for the rezoning request and the plotting is to realign Woods Chapel to smooth out this curve as part of phase two of the uh, Woods Chapel Road Improvement Project. I think I've gone over every major point. If there are any questions, I'll certainly are there try any to answer those. For staff? You say that. Question. You say the city owns, or since they annexed that, the city owns that property right there then? Uh, Mr. McDonald, perhaps you could help in terms of ownership. What portions do this, does the city own? Is it just the great, is it just this portion that's outside, currently outside the city limits? Yeah. Okay. So it's this, yeah, it's this portion that you see here. Kind of outside this blue line. That's where it says site. And they want it to rezone to General business? Rezoning, yes, all the properties to general business. So this whole area that you see here would be general business. <coughs> and again, it's just a small piece back here uh, that's MF14, kind of a little remnant from the residential to the, to the east and north here. Are there any plans for what might go in there? Uh, nothing. Or at least it's just for right of way uh, expansion. Okay. Uh, I don't know if there's any. Oh, Jim, would you have to know? Expansion with their modification to the chiropractic office with the parking lot, I think. I'm sorry. As part of the Witch Chapel Road project, um, because they will be taking a small bit of the parking lot um, from Tucker through right away acquisition um, in order to make that right with, with um, the landowner. Uh, the city is going to complete some improvements for him as well, um, some parking lot improvements uh, okay. in particular. Uh, so, and, and that's one of the reasons uh, that their rezoning is going forward. As far as potential uses, the city is really just setting itself up for if uh, for people who might come forward with an interest in what remnant parcel is left there when the road work is done. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Since you are the applicant, yes. uh, we've taken care of that portion as well. Yes. Is there anyone yeah. in the audience who would like to speak in favor? Yes, Mr. If I may, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Chairman, but uh, as you notice in your packet, there is, I mean, to answer uh, Commissioner Graham's question from the previous agenda item, there is uh, the 185 foot notification map, even though the city is one initiating the rezoning, the city owns the majority of the property, but uh, even for the portion the city doesn't own, we did that full notification. So. <coughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Now, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in favor of this uh, rezone? Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to the rezone? Seeing none, I'll bring it up here for comments. Mr. Chair. And Ms. Banks. I would very much Pardon like me? to uh, comment. Public hearing, or are you making a comment? Comment. Oh, I thought you were going to make a motion. I'm sorry. I can do that too. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Because this is a very much needed um, straightening of a curve that needed to be done on Witch Chapel for some time. And I'm sure that Lake Tapawingo is going to be very pleased with it so they don't lose their fence so many times. <laughs> so, but I do think that this is a, a positive step on the city's part. Thank you. Any other comments? Close the public hearing. I'll bring it up here for discussion and or motions. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, regarding case RZ9-12-3669 on the Tucker City property at Woods Chapel. Motion to approve. 
Have Second. a motion? Second. Second, Mr. Graham. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Commissioner Wallace. Aye. Commissioner Graham. Aye. Commissioner Bar Bartolotto. Aye. Commissioner Duhon. Aye. Commissioner Banks. Aye. Commissioner Trozen. Aye. Commissioner Abbott. Aye. Commissioner Wallace. Again? Yes, yeah, sorry. Aye. Thank you. Um, Chairman <laughs> Billups. Aye. <laughs> that motion is approved, and we will recommend approval to the council on that. Uh, then we'll move to the preliminary plat. Um, and I would entertain another motion. Mr. Chair, since I'm on a roll here. Ms. Banks. <laughs> I would like to make a motion to approve case file PP-9-12-3670 and PF-9-12-1 uh, oh, separate. separate. Okay. All right. Then I stopped at the 3670. Tucker Plaque first, Platt lots one and two. Second. With, with, or with staff recommendations? Yes, staff recommendations. Still seconded? Yes. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? And that preliminary plan has been approved. And we move on to the final plan. Okay, now, <laughs> case file, I'd like to make a motion to approve PF 9-12-3671, Tucker Platt first plat. No, lot. Sure. Oh, final plat. a final plat, excuse me. Final plat with staff recommendations. P uh, Repeat that again. I think I read the case number wrong. PF9. No. Oh, PF10. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's see. I was going to put the, they have two together on one. Yes, oh, the PF okay. is the final number. PF-10-12-3671. With staff, With staff recommendations. recommendations. Second. Mr. Graham, thank you. Oh. <laughs> have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. And that final plat will be recommended for approval to the council. And we now move on to item number seven, which is a site plan design review for Point of Hope Church. Mr. Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the commission. Karen, this is great. I love the way this is set up. So you can just click on this, um, click on this side thing. I think that's wonderful. I don't know where to start, though. <clears throat> that is. Um, before you tonight is a uh, site plan design review, a requested amendment to a previously approved site plan and design review for the Point of Hope Church. The Point of Hope Church uh, is located on the west side of Northwest 7 Highway, it's north of I-70, uh, northeast of Jefferson Street. The applicant is, is requesting um, three, basic, three basic changes. They are requesting that the translucent polycarbonate outer shell um, uh, not be required for most of the south facade and all of the west facade. Uh, we'll look at the elevations in a minute. Um, they're also um, requesting approval of their three uh, metal, um, for lack of a better word, um, sort of artwork um, that is in the entrance to the north of the building. And then finally, they are requesting to remove the canopy over the entrance on the north side of the building. And let's go to the... To the uh, <coughs> elevations and if you look at the elevations the the uh, canopy that they're talking about is this canopy over the north elevation the translucent um, the translucent what are we calling that um, <laughs> polycarbonate material uh, it's a little harder to see I think on this elevation than it is on the elevation uh, that you have in your packet, but um, this portion of the south facade has the polycarbonate, and that's about 25 feet, and it wraps around from the front of the facade around the south facade, um, so that from uh, if you're driving down uh, 7 Highway, moving north, 
uh, there's a potential that you might see that. I will tell you that the south facade of this building is really difficult to see um, if you're moving north northbound on 7 Highway um, because of the existing structures uh, between West uh, Ace Hardware and the Quick Trip. Uh, it's just difficult to see. Um, the rear facade is this facade back here, and currently it has none of the polycarbonate. The metal structures they're talking about are these structures out here. Previously, there was a canopy structure out there. They decided to remove that canopy structure and put in, um, I, I believe there's actually three, but the applicant may correct me, but I believe there are actually three metal um, structures out here, uh, actually very nice looking. Um, but again, those are the three changes that they are proposing, and with that, I will stand for any questions uh, and defer to the applicant. Do we have any questions for staff? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Would the applicant like to make a presentation? You guys have a question? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a presentation. <coughs> Do we have any questions for the applicant? I don't know. Any comments? Okay. Thank you. Okay. I, I would like to tell you that what you've done so far looks really nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Any other comments? I would entertain motions then. You're looking at me, so I guess I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, Chairman, I would make Mr. a motion to approve SPDR-10-12-3696 for the Point of Hope Church. With the staff recommendations? With staff recommendations. Second. I have a motion for the second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And that site plan design review has been approved. And we move on to other business. Um, Mr. Allen, uh, we did have well, one issue that I wanted to bring up. I've talked yes. to you about it. Uh, we have a meeting uh, scheduled in December for December 26th. Uh, that's a Wednesday because the 24th, which should be our normal meeting, is a holiday. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I really don't plan on being around to have a meeting that day. Um, we would need to actually take a vote, have a motion, take a vote to not hold that meeting and let staff know that so they don't get something on their agenda for that. Appreciate that. So would you like a motion to Make cancel the December 26th meeting? I would meeting? love a motion to cancel the December 26th meeting. I would make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Second. I would second. I'll second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We will not be meeting on December 26th. Uh, is there anything else, Mr. Allen, that you uh, like to bring up? Well, two, two quick things. One related to that, Mr. Chairman, is then the, the following meeting would be January 14th, which sounds late because it is. It's like the latest you can have the first meeting for the Planning Commission in January. So it's kind of an odd thing where... Uh, the first council meeting in January is not until January 7th. They usually have a conflict with New Year's Day, but this this coming year, that's not the case. So kind of regular uh, approach for January for the Planning Commission. There's still the uh, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. holiday that City Council has to contend with. But anyway, just for your for your information, it, it seems long, but it is really only two weeks after. So we're not, it's, there's not, it isn't a fifth Monday in December or anything like that. So. Uh, just so keep that in mind. So the first meeting of the new year will be January 14th. Secondly, more recent to that is this Thursday is the next uh, public meeting for the 40 Highway Corridor Plan at William Bryant Elementary. Uh, I think 5 o'clock, kind of doors open. 5.30 is presentation. It's going to be a little more hands-on, kind of what uh, the Planning Commission has gone through summer of last year with uh, kind of getting some maps out, making some drawings and things like that. So it'll be more opportunity to do a little bit more hands-on type uh, kind of wish list type drawings like we've done already, uh, as well as free pizza. So to everybody who's watching this as well, free pizza. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <behind elementary>. uh, <laughs> about 5.30 this Thursday. So uh, that's kind of the, the, the enticement to get folks there and, and kind of stick around. It, it goes till 8 o'clock. I don't anticipate you need to be there till 8 o'clock. It will be 5.30 presentation, hands-on, a little more keypad polling, like was done at the last meeting, uh, where you get little remote controls and you vote for things. 
not as extensively involved as with that as the first meeting. So it's a little bit more diverse. It's not a just sit down and get talked at for an hour and a half. It's and, and William Bryant is the elementary across the parkway from Blue Spring South. Is that that's correct? correct. Yes. They, they try to choose a, a location as close as possible geographically like we've done when we looked at 40 Highway. Uh, <coughs> You know, we met CJC and things like that. Um, that's the closest elementary school or public venue, I should say, to uh, 40 Highway. So uh, 5 o'clock, doors open, 5.30 presentation. <coughs> Beyond that, the agenda is kind of fluid at this point, but free pizza. You did mention free pizza. I did mention free pizza. Free. <laughs> I, don't, I can't vouch for what kind of pizza that is, but there you go. That's even more of a mystery to show up and see what you get. So. <laughs> Well, we have a, a plethora of pizza establishments in town, so there's indeed, yeah, there could be a whole mix. I'm not <laughs> sure. So, hopefully, uh, some hopefully can at least attend for part of it. Maybe just the hands-on part or the keep have polling. I understand there's a lot going on as you ramp up to uh, the holiday season here. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other business? Uh, on a personal note, I'd like to invite everybody to come downtown a week from today for the uh, holiday open house, the second annual. Uh, come down see all the merchants downtown uh, also uh, not really part of the Planning Commission here but the Historical Society is having their homes tour the Saturday after Thanksgiving which would be before our next meeting so uh, invite everybody to participate in that and help them out anything else if not I would entertain a motion to adjourn so moved. second a motion and a second all in favor all right. right we are adjourned That's her artwork. That's her artwork. <laughs>